Grand Rising, my friends. Hey there to the most beautiful subscribers in several known dimensions. We are taking over now. We just awesome in it with this. So you better be down with it. We like 72 with it. Man, gorgeous individuals. If you're new here, hey there, join us. This is uh, in the weekend. We're going to have a little bit of fun. Over <clears throat> stock market didn't look too good going into the week. Yeah, I think we had a pretty bad week. You can't got to find a better list. These um, this, uh, this one here is not it's not cutting it. It's not giving me what I need. I just want just like kind of, okay. I want most active. I don't, I don't think I want most active. I didn't go to the market. Most active. Here we go. Yeah, I just kind of want to see what the, what the, what the big ones did. But all right, we'll figure that out. Here, crypto market is, has been down to 46 and not looking good. Um, market cap at 2.195 trillion, still close to 2.2, but um, Avalanche has been doing really well. It was up, was up to 116, is now 114. Even today, Luna, so there's been some bright spots, even though uh, it's been a bit of a downturn the past couple of about, about two or three weeks now. But, you know, the market is the market. I don't even trip over that. Ethereum burns. Now we had a 1.2 million. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep going. It's not stopping. It is not stopping. You know that, and so we know that. Here, what about that positivity? And the reason why, if, you're not, if you don't know why, the importance of the Ethereum burn is that it... Um, makes ethereum close to being deflationary instead of just say, ethereum doesn't have a, a, a limit cap like bitcoin has 21 million bitcoin that would ever be mine we had like 90 percent of that right about now i believe uh, but ethereum does not have the same type of limit on it the way it's designed but the burn mechanism makes it to where more will be burned than it's being created which then turns it into a deflationary mechanism similar to bitcoin here we bought that positivity, positivity being someone in your life that is meaningful to you. Write something nice about them down there. I'm just going to start on the uh, purple man thing. By the way, Spider-Man, No Way Home. Amazing. Spectacular. Uh, awesome. I think it was any of the other titles of it. Never was an uncanny Spider-Man. Uh, no exceptional. Celsior. Anyway, Spider Man was super good. The write something nice about them down in the comment section. Send this video forward to them. Then they'll do the same, and we will make sure everyone will pass forward and become knowledgeable and understand. We'll do something a little bit different. We we'll go before we get into some of the other kind of similar stories we we discuss here that helps us plan for the future. We're gonna have a bit of a this saw something that I thought was I'll, I'll go it anyway i'll just show it <clears throat> the thumbnail will probably be about it and um you know it's kind of hey one of the craziest things i saw this weekend group of monkeys kill over 250 dogs for revenge in indian town a group of monkeys in a small town in India took revenge on a local dog population this month by throwing them off of the top of tall buildings and trees. It is reported that the monkeys have killed about 250 pups in the process. And I think they mean pups. They probably just mean dogs, not literally puppies. And are now targeting villagers. The monkeys located in Maljagong. I'm going to be butchering that. Oh, none of this is financial advice. None of this is medical advice. Health advice, spiritual advice, advice about astrology, astronomy, anything you can imagine. This is just purely entertainment, watching uh, butcher things, mangle words, all that good stuff. It started the rampage after some of the dogs allegedly killed an infant monkey. The news reported that when a monkey see a dog approach, they will catch them and throw them from a significant height to the ground. In the neighboring village of Lavo. 
The monkeys have fully eradicated all of the dogs. After all the dogs were killed in the village, residents contacted forest department officials to catch the monkeys. But when the officials attempted to catch the monkeys, they were unable to catch even a single monkey. This is... What do you say? I mean, you know, yeah, this is not killing for for food or or at this point, even as a point of protection. It seems they just target. I mean, you can say protection in the sense of, hey, if we eradicate them, they'll never be able to hurt one of us ever again. Um, typically, there's a preference for attacking a third party associated with the original aggressor as opposed to the actual aggressor. For the most part, the acts of revenge take place shortly after your attack. But this seems to be prolonged over time. This says even some after the forest departments were unable to capture some of the monkeys, villagers began attempting to rescue the dogs on their own. But some of them have found themselves sub subject to the monkeys' retaliation. Some have been injured themselves or fallen from buildings. What do you? I mean, look, you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do at, at, after a point. So, um. You have to take care of it, but that that this is the 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 craziest story I saw this week in terms of just like can you imagine this, you know, where we live at typically probably most watching this at this point is still in America, that a you know, a, a gang of monkeys? I don't know what you call it, a, a, a a gaggle of monkeys? What do you have to look up with a um posse of monkeys or the large group of monkeys is called are taking everyone's dogs and killing them taking them apart and throwing them off stuff that is insane <laughs> that was like that. see this is like, you know a bit of a dark sense of humor but it's one of those ones where you just be you just like is this real you know you think you know i had to like see if this it still may not be you know this may be a lie story but hey and some more of the things we talk about as soft as jelly, as hard as glass. Researchers create hy a hydrogel as strong as shatterproof glass. Researchers from the University of Cambridge have invented a super jelly so strong it can hold its shape even with the equivalent of an elephant treading on it, despite being 80% water. Jelly-like materials, and this is where it becomes important because, you know, why is this important? But what's going to be used as the mus muscle tissue for those robots we talk about in the future you know either the tesla bots or any uh boston dynamics or any of the hundreds if not thousands of companies that are building the next generation of 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 advanced robotics is going to be stuff like this does jelly-like material or hydrogels have many applications in soft robotics tissue engineering and wearable tech and so imagine now you know, it's a lot of applications of it, but being in the car, in the seat, and when the force come, it, you know, you have enough is designed to where when force hits it it, it, it changes its composition, become hard to take that force, but still it's soft, <laughs> you know, on the side that's touching you. So you like in a cocoon cushion as, you know, being able to take, um, be, being protected. You know, body armor that's soft and gel and, and moving, but as soon as the force hit, is able to um, um, harden enough to repel any force and not deform enough into the body to cause damage or, you know, reduce that amount. Or like I said, be, be in the muscles and the tendons for the next generation or, you know, whatever of, of advanced robots that are able to be uh, soft and pliable, but super strong. That may be a little bit scary for um, some of the things we discussed here, but, you know, still becoming. According to this study published in Nature Materials, the new hydrogel material is soft like a jelly, but acts like an ultra hard shatterproof glass when compressed. The way material behaves, molecular structure, just talking about they were able to instead of. What used to be in order to make materials with mechanical properties, we won't we use cross linkers where two molecules are joined through a chemical bond 
We use reversible to make them soft, stretchy, but making it hard, compressible hydrogel is difficult. So the new one found the principle of cross, but has special barrel shaped molecules that held them together almost like handcuffs. So probably it was through accident that they discovered it like most things and it could be designed. You know, now we, we have um, a lot of assistance with, you know, look, they could just be super smart people to figure it out themselves or they could have had um, <clears throat> artificial intelligence and, and ways to kind of push it like, hey, this may, may make things better. Let's see if they, I don't think they're discussing there exactly how. But it's awesome. We also found the compressor street could be easily controlled through simply changing the chemical structure of the gas molecule inside the handcuff. So I thought that would be super, you know, like I said, the future is coming faster than we think. Speaking of which, and look, they, these people, you know, I don't know what you got to do. I don't know if you got to accept the cookies or what, but, you know, won't let me. Only any member got to subscribe, but we'll see. I'll show you what I've done. But digital twins. So what is a digital twin? Well, basically is, you know, wearing, I, I wear a lot of this uh, Amazon Halo and some cheap one I bought years ago. I don't even know what is um, even a brand of it. Feel fit or something. Oh no, that may be the um, the scale. But anyway, collecting data and being able to generate much like you can have a a twin of a, a um, of a car in virtual space, and you know, say how it would happen when things happen to it. But doing that with the human body, and doing that with each of us, and being able to see, see how your twin is doing, and predicting how you are doing based on that, and the information you gain from all these devices we'll be wearing, and pretty soon, at some point, our clothes will literally, our toothbrush, our toilets, you know, um, everything will be collected and feeding information to the artificial intelligences that will create these digital twins that will say, hey, oh, hey, this is going on. Maybe you should consume this that will help with that. And, you know, being vague, but, it, you know, it'd be like, hey, you your calcium is low. You need to increase your calcium. We we um, in a refrigerator, there's some orange juice, bananas and, um, uh, you know, that we prepare for you, that type of stuff. And, and spinach prepare for you. Please, please partake of it. Your calcium is low. This will, you know, that this amount it will help. That that type of um, getting to that level of it. So anyway, it talks about just how digital uh, twin technology is is coming, using sensors to measure physical asset by allowing scientists and engineers to collect a wealth of data that can be mapped into a virtual model. And we are getting that with all of the technologies, the wearable medical devices. And it's going to um, revolutionize healthcare. So it's going to be a super important thing. You know, I used to be against paranoid about all this, this stuff. Like, oh, you know, I don't want them knowing this. And that's at the end of the day, if they wanted they'd get it anyway. <laughs> so I might as well start taking advantage of what's out there for my own personal use in the future. So, you know, I read in a book years ago of, of um, uh, individuals who every day would track, you know, like their weight their, um, you know, just like different things, their bowel movements, when they went to the um, um, urination, you know, when they when they peed, when they uh, went number two, when they uh, everything that a person, they, you know, they track their stuff so they can kind of keep a sense of things and knew when things are going wrong, predict. And it made sense to me to, you know, to um, as somebody who 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 who, in the, who who thinks like that in the field, that um, it would be smart to do that. So. You know, a lot of this wearable stuff having it pretty soon we'll be able to download a lot of this and this and be like, hey, we need to do this A, B or C. And it'll it's going to you know increase longevity It's going to keep us alive longer, make us healthier. So it's, it's not a bad thing. You know, I think people are, are so worried about or or, or have this. Um, some of it's irrational, but some of it's a, 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 a good, healthy fear of of technology and the unknown because you know it you have to be careful and, and the promises sometimes don't always meet to where it's going to be but at the end of the day don't do nothing you don't feel comfortable with in a little bit you know for me keeping track of this myself you know granted any of these companies that are also run these apps could have that the same copy as well but what you know my sleep cycle you know if my heart rate is up 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, all this stuff we wear anyway, hey, Google knows where you at. I mean, you know, where you at on a physical location on the planet at all the times. So. And, um, yeah, this article was talking about all these uh, companies that may potentially, you know, I, I haven't looked into them, so I don't know anything about them. If you choose to do this on your own, it's on you. They're looking into um, these digital twin systems. Art Basel, switching subjects. Art Basel, Miami, has been permanently changed by NFTs and crypto. So Art Basel, if you are familiar with the art world or lived in Miami, been down there, you know, it's a, a very large kind of um, exposition, um, I think what Expo stands for, Expo, that happens uh, annually. I'm not sure if they had it last year or not. And in, at Art Basel, um, you know, you saw always a lot of artists that perform. And look, NFTs have changed how artists are able to get paid now. If you're an artist with, with any bit of a name and you may have had kind of beg and scrounge around to get people to, you know, listen to you now, sell a few NFTs or, or make a collection, you can man, fund the rest of your, uh, your life in that way. So now I think it's really going to open up artists to be able to really be able to produce and not have to worry so much about the um, finance, financing themselves side of it as well. And then, now granted, you have some people get lazy and not do anything. Good, peace. You know, they probably was just making stuff just to try to just gain the system anyway. But people who are truly inspired that want to um, inspire others, why, why wouldn't you not have them um, feel comfortable in, in the way that they're able to produce? Anyway, so a lot of things were shown there. There's a lot of uh, crypto, blah, 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 art basil, blah, blah, blah. They had some Star Trek stuff, had a release of an NFT that coded into the DNA of a living that that's coded into the DNA of the living bacterial organism, making it the first living NFT. So, I, you know, remember this was our base was a place. If you remember the story of a banana that was duct taped to a wall, <laughs> it sold for some ridiculous amount, like tens of thousands of dollars. Our basil. So, yeah, bacterial NFTs. What happens when your NFT die? <laughs> I'm just so sorry. It's a dark thought. Uh, you can still probably read the DNA, read the code on the DNA. To be quite honest, but Christie's is there. You know, they're saying, "Hey, did they talk too much noise been made about the democratizing power of NFTs? How their existence can play a huge role in the lives of artists looking to build livelihoods outside of the traditional gallery system." But they also NFTs are institutionalized. With Christie's hosting an exclusive VIP event. With an uninhibited playground for 34 different NFT artists. So. That's why, you know, people talk about a downturn is going to be a crypto winner. I'm like, I'm not, you know, not. It's a lot of institutional Nike buying uh, NFT companies to have their own company foothold. Pardon the pun. Womp, 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 in the metaverse. And, um. First time I think I ever got the ability that I realized I was making a pun in the time I was able to say that, man. Let's let's give a small bit of a I've seen people do that so much in entertainment and stuff and never been able to do it myself. Um and Adidas as well, but I mean like everybody getting involved. Let's let's be real. Let's be real. And I know I'm butcher this, but I was practicing this. Kazakhstan, Kazakh, Kazakh. Kazakhstan's president, I'm not going to go that far, but Kazakhstan plans for a nuclear power plant to keep crypto mining. Nuclear. We have quantum crypto mining, nuclear. So I had to put whatever word in front of it. What was the, uh, well, you know, blockchain crypto. <laughs> Just throw, like you say, uh, blockchain in front of anything to save anything or nano. Nano. We're going to do some nano crypto mining next. <laughs> But no, they're, they're dead serious. So Kazakhstan is thinking about, hey, we are having an energy crisis. We could get more energy from Russia. I think it was Russia. I'll check here in a second. 
So they were saying, yeah, a lot of miners went to um, after China's crackdown on the crypto. A lot of China, a little after China's crap, crack, crap down too, crack down on crypto mining. A lot of the miners went to Kazakhstan. But yeah, let me see. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I, well, I don't know. I said Russia may help with them, but they were talking about do they want to buy more energy from Russia, which I thought they felt they didn't want to do. Blah, 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 implodes. But now they're saying Russia may help build the first time proposed to build. He carried discussion, offering assistant technology and training. They did fear the environment implications. I don't know about it. I mean, look, you got to, I think maybe I was just saying that. I think I was just saying, yeah, you can't be so afraid of, 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 of moving forward in technology. I think even here in the United States, we should be looking at what it would look like to, um, if necessary, build some uh, more modern and I mean it, it, there are companies looking at building um, versions of kind of nuclear power plants that are, are smaller more modulized modular compartmentalized not, I'm not sure exactly if modulized is the word but yeah they were saying hey we're either gonna uh, okay I know how I saw that in here I think I'm just going nuts now but anyway oh yeah no okay here yeah we'll purchase Russian electricity for the winter so yeah they didn't want to do that so they're thinking hey look we brought this up a couple years ago everybody was mad fought us against it now we thinking that hey we're gonna have to do this and, and it may be unpopular but guess what I, sometimes and I, and, and I agree with this fully if you ever had to be in a position of managing other people you understand this wholeheartedly that sometimes you got to do unpopular things because you know what's best you've been there long enough you've seen the cycles you know you, you that people come back oh this is gonna work or not gonna work you're like okay and then you try and be like, oh, you, you know that's the why you're like uh look i know what's gonna work and not work I, i've seen the cycles what do you want me to say and people are like oh no we need to do this and he's like okay so we're just going to do this unpopular decision and then after everybody be mad and after while y'all all come to me that oh wow how how you're glad that I was right and and how could I have known so but and and look they saying look they want to get some um they want to keep being able to have these miners here to mine those cryptos so we we'll, we'll build a, a nuclear power plant and get it cracking what are you going to do about it <laughs> I mean look don't take any of this stuff lightly and joke and laugh and all of that but in reality um they could d say let's increase our coal plants increase our uh, burning and trying to destroy the earth when right now you know we know a lot more than we did when we first start with a uh, nuclear engineering technology and so to denigrate the advances made that we possibly can do things a little bit if not better somewhat you know safer come on Let's be real. But let's also know that I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.